and welcome to another virtual program with the Paul Sawyer Public Library. Uh, my name is Diane Dahoney and I am the Community Service Librarian uh, at Paul Sawyer and we're just thrilled to have everyone joining us tonight virtually. Um, we are recording this evening so um, for those who aren't able to join us in real time, uh, we will be posting this video um, to the PSPL YouTube page um, for you to be able to watch at a later date or if you want to recommend it to friends and family who aren't able to join us, um, we'll be able to do so. Um, tonight's speaker is uh, our local railroad expert, I like to call him, uh, Charles Bogard. Um, and uh, he'll, he's going to give you a little bit more of his background um, with uh, his railroad knowledge and, and some of his, uh, some of the places that he volunteers and has worked uh, over the years. But tonight he will be talking about the l &N Railroad, the Louisville and Nashville Railroad from Cincinnati to Winchester, Cincinnati, Ohio to Winchester, Kentucky. Um, mainly via um, historical postcards. Um, this is another program um, uh, following along sort of in a mini series that we've had um, scattered uh, throughout the past year or so. Um, and we're picking up um, from Cincinnati to Winchester this evening. So without further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to our speaker, Charles Bogart. Welcome Charles. Thank you. I also have on my hat to, on my head tonight my uh, Capital City Museum, uh, Frankfurt City Museum, uh, where I work. So this is part of their program, reaching out. And I also mentioned that I'm a conductor over at the Bluegrass Railroad Museum at First Sales, Kentucky. And I've been involved with railroads since I was a kid because my mom always said when she couldn't find me in the yard, she walked up the block to the railroad tracks and knew that I would be there. So tonight we're gonna to use some postcards and pictures to take a journey on the Louisville and Nashville, the l &M, from Cincinnati, Ohio to Winchester, Kentucky. Uh, this is a route, this is actually showing it all the way down Corbin, coming out of Cincinnati down to Paris, which would have been this uh, Covington and Lexington, and then from Paris on down to Winchester, about here, which would have been the Kentucky Central Railroad, two separate railroads. Another view of our track, DeCourcy Yard, Morning View, Butler, Falmouth, Berry, Cynthiana, Paris, uh, Australix, and into Winchester. Okay, we're up at Cincinnati. Uh, it's 1862, Kirby Smith and the Confederate troops September 62 have moved north, come up what I call the I-75 corridor, have hit the hills outside of Northern Kentucky where they've run into the Ohio squirrel hunters, so-called, the local militia. Uh, this is over here, Fort Mitchell, Fort right on top of the hill. The uh, uh, large bridge isn't in yet. This will be a suspension bridge is. Seeing they're ferrying the troops across and they're moving a locomotive across to serve on the Kentucky Central Railroad. Except there was no Kentucky Central at that time. It was just a publicity name they used for it. Okay, we're at a map up here, Cincinnati here, Covington here, New Cincinnati, Ohio, Covington, Kentucky, Newport, Kentucky. This was the uh, Baltimore and Ohio and uh, Norfolk Western Yard. This is now CSX Queensgate and Norfolk Southern Yes Street Yard here. Yes is spelled G-E-S-T. This is Cincinnati, New Orleans and Texas Pacific track here. This is CSX today. But when we're talking about this is C&O track over which the Louisville Nashville has track rights. The actual Louisville Nashville track comes up here this way through Newport over to Cincinnati. Okay, we are looking down upon Cincinnati Union Terminal cut. This is all gone. The shed's gone. Tar A is still here. This is Museum Center. This is gone. Uh, Cincinnati skyline has changed. That's Newport over there. Another view. 
this was Lincoln Park. Uh, Freeman Avenue over here. Uh, does that give you an idea what this area was before they took out Lincoln Park and put in Cincinnati Union Terminal? By the way, this was supposed to be a streetcar entrance, streetcar exit. They actually had a plan to put an airport across here. Uh, airport never went in. The streetcar tunnel was put in, but the streetcars never ran. A view at, at night. The last passenger train, of course, was in 1971. Closed down, Amtrak moved out of side of town, and then Amtrak came back in year 2000. We get an Amtrak train through here every other day except Sunday. Interior view of cut. They have just refurbished this, cleaned these mosaics up. This is the ticket counter for buying tickets to the three museums that are in here. Natural History Museum, the Nature's Museum, the Children's Museum. This leads back to Omnimax and to the steps that go downstairs, the Amtrak station, and down beneath here is the Cincinnati Historic Society Museum. A view down the hallway. All this is now gone. These mosaics are here. The mosaics that were back here oops, were back in the hall. This has now been converted to fast food. We've now gone back in. These mosaics were saved, went to Cincinnati uh, Airport, actually Cincinnati Northern Kentucky Airport, because the airport's in Northern Kentucky. This mosaic was lost. These are being removed back to Cincinnati because the terminal they were in at the airport are being, is being torn down. Okay. We're getting ready to come over to Covington. Cincinnati Union Terminal's back here. Our train's gonna come down here. This is all owned by Chesapeake and Ohio Railway, across the Chesapeake and Ohio Railway Bridge, and then on south. Up here, this is the Louisville and Nashville Railroad, came across here. When the CNO, CNO, when the LNN in the 1880s went to build a bridge across from Covington to Cincinnati, the citizens of Covington would not allow it because they like the idea of offloading boxcars, putting them on wagons, and moving across the river on ferries. Uh, so the LNN moved their bridge over here, and the uh, Teamsters lost all their business. Another view, Cincinnati Union Terminal back here. We're coming up the High Line, the CNO track, up through here. This is the ditch down here. This is actually the White Whitewater Canal, later converted to railroad. Uh, this is MB Tar. Uh, it's an interlock controlling where these tracks come together. LN train, the Flamingo coming across. Another view looking down, coming across the bridge. This was the LN produce yard, the LN train, Pennsylvania yard down there. Baltimore and Ohio yard here, Baltimore and Ohio uh, freight depot there. Another view of the LNN produce yard here. There was actually a track that came across here when they put in Great American Ballpark and Paul Brown Stadium, they took that track out for some reason, unknown reason. This track up here is still used by the Cincinnati dinner train. Another view of the CNO bridge, an old view. Uh, the to the uh, packet boats are the Louisville and Cincinnati, which ran between Cincinnati and Louisville until 1918 when they were crushed in an ice storm. Okay, we've come across the bridge. Excuse me. This is the bridge coming across CNO track. CNO Yard in Covington, the CNO track turning off, going off to Ashland and Huntington. The LNN track came up here, track rights on down through here and over to Cincinnati. This is the LNN track coming to the industry they serve up through here, down Saratoga in Newport. We're coming on across the bridge into Covington. This is taken from OB Tar. 
it controls these switches here. This the Covington depots right in back of us. Uh, Cincinnati, Ohio has state liquor stores that sell very little selection. Crawl across any bridge into New Covington or Newport, and there's a liquor store selling everything. We are up at the Vu Park looking down. This is the American Oriental Express coming through. That ran for a few years in the late, in the early 80s from Chicago to the Greenbrier and back. Uh, this is the uh, Covington Depot here. Mother of God Church. If you are ever in the Cincinnati area, visit Mother of God Church. You will not find a finer church with European decorations, all in German. Mother God is the English translation of the name of the church. I can't, I'm German, but I can't pronounce it. Over here is the Cathedral Basilica, which is the largest stained glass window in the United States, all within a mile of each other. By the way, that's Newport Catholic where I went to school, high school. This is a picture be, uh, before 1930 when they raised the track coming through town and moved the yard from here to where you saw in the picture off to the right. The depot went here. This is the old depot. As you can see, this is all at street level. It was a mess. So they moved all this out and raised it on up as part of a WPA uh, New Deal work project. This is the Covington's Depot now. It is owned by a private business. Uh, it was a two-story depot. You came in here and then you had to take an elevator up here to get to the track. It's a Jim Crow Depot. This was the colored wedding room over here. This was the white general wedding room over here. This is the uh, train board from the white waiting room. This is from the last day of operation. And this is the board in the colored waiting room. White waiting room, colored waiting room. Separate but equal, doesn't quite look like it. We've now moved a little bit down the track. This is Masonic Temple. KC Junction, the CNO track's going to turn off like that. Excuse me, CNO turns off there. Louisville and Nashville continues on down this way. A view of KC Tar. The only thing left of it now is the concrete foundation. There's the George Washington going by with the one and only streamlined locomotive the CNO put together. I lived in Newport next to the CNO track. I remember as a kid seeing this a few times. Okay, we're going to swing over over to Newport for a second. We're over in Newport. This is the Newport Depot. You can see it does not align with the CNO track. It actually aligns with the Louisville and Nashville track that came across here because that was the railroad that was here first. NX Tar, I hung out here a lot of times when I was a kid. Weedman's Brewery Grain Silo here. And this was a railroad built bridge called the Wagon Bridge. And new people in town would be confused when people would tell them, well, take the Wagon Bridge. What's the Wagon Bridge? That's the Wagon Bridge. It's been replaced by a concrete bridge. And the people in Newport still call it the Wagon Bridge. This is all gone. Uh, this was Lewis Trout Dairy, and then somebody bought Lewis Trout out, and they're gone. On to, to uh, Latonia. We've moved a little bit. The Cathedral Basilica is right off the right. This was the CNO Roundhouse here. It still stands. It's part of the Vogue Paper Company. The CNO Office Building is gone. We go a short distance past there, and this was the CNO Railroad YMCA. The CNO was big with railroad YMCAs because they didn't serve beer or alcohol. They didn't have loose women there. And they knew that their crew, if they stayed here, would get a good meal, a good night's sleep, and would show up not drunk. 
this is now an apartment house in Covington, Kentucky. CNO locomotive is a bad picture, but you people who are postcard collectors realize that you take what you can get. Uh, there was a lot of people who took homemade pictures and put them on postcard type things and mailed them. That's what this is. This is a standpipe for putting water into the tender. Another view of a postcard. I have, you know, you, you have no idea why these were taken. I guess these, all these guys got together, had their picture taken, and then they bought the postcards and sent them off to home or put them on the, uh, the China cabinet or something. This was a picture I found, not a postcard. This apparently is the work crew at the Corsi yard. We've come out, we're not quite got the, the Corsi. This is the uh, L and N track up here. This is the Cincinnati, Newport and Covington green line streetcar dumping uh, underneath it. This is a much bigger bridge here now, trestle, and still says L and N railroad on it. If you go out Madison Avenue, uh, the streetcar line shut down in 1951 and transportation service in Northern Kentucky is now provided by tank transit authority in Northern Kentucky. We're going down the track a little bit in this. When I was a kid, we called this the poor folks home. Uh, it's been tore down a new building put in place. It's now called the Senior Citizen Center. Same purpose. Okay, we're coming down, on down the track, down to Latonia here. The depot at Latonia, this once again is a picture postcard. The track from uh, Winchester to Cincinnati, the track to Louisville this way, track that way to Newport. Another view back towards the depot. Uh, I wish the guy had used a better camera, but hey, he took the picture. He made some postcard things. He mailed them out and somebody saved this and sold it on eBay. Uh, what can I say? You take what, what you can get. This is a picture I got out of a book. We're looking towards Newport. Uh, L and office and L and N uh, work cars for crew. If we had swung off to the left and followed the L and N track to its original depot in Cincinnati before it moved to Cut, this is the depot that they were using. We went through Newport and over the L and N bridge to Cincinnati. They shared this depot with the Pennsylvania Railroad. It's all gone now. And if we turned at Latonia, went via the short line, Louisville, Cincinnati, and Lexington is what the CSX calls it, we would have wound up at this depot in Louisville. The shed's gone. This is now Transit Authority of River City headquarters. This is all a parking lot now for buses. This was the Louisville Nashville Railroad headquarters building. It's now a state office building. This is an aerial view. We're coming down from Cincinnati towards Winchester. Track over to Newport. Track down to Louisville. Louisville up to Cincinnati and to Corsi Yards down here. This part is gone. There used to be a track that swung off here. And as you can see, there used to be a track that came across here. And this is where the depot was lo located, was right there. Going a little bit farther down, this is Latonia Racetrack. The premier racetrack in Kentucky until in the 1930s, Churchill Down and Keeneland were runner ups and they folded during the depression. But this was a major delivery point for the Louisville and Nashville uh, horses in those days did not travel by airplane. They traveled in, in uh, horse cars on trains. So this is the race ground. It is now a shopping center. 
threw this in because this was life along the Licking River, these little fishing camps, shanty boats. Uh, this was part of my childhood. No, we didn't live here, but this was all here. When I moved to Frankfort, Kentucky, we had a shanty boat community. My wife taught kids who lived on the shanty boat. And one day we blinked and the shanty boats were gone. I have no idea what happened. I assume social service and things like that made the change. I don't know. We're moving on down the track to the Corsi Yard. This was the, the big Louisville and Nashville coal yard. We'll talk about it in a second. Uh, this is actually a picture looking towards Cincinnati. All this is gone, people, gone. This was, again, a postcard view that I bought off of eBay. Uh, I assume everybody bought one of these postcards, sent it home to mom and dad, put it up in the china cabinet, and things like that. Uh, a view into the Corsi Yard now. Uh, this is now owned by Progress Rail. This is Lolly Steel over here. And these are all cars in storage. They do car repair there. And the sum track that CSX has is this one little track right here. Everything else has been to torn up and sold off. We're now coming on down to Grant, Kentucky. Our yard's right there. This is Grant. The shelter was right here. There is still nothing at Grant. And there's the shelter that was there. This is the other end of Grant Tunnel. This is the original bore. This is a picture I took. This is the new bore. This is Lamb, Kentucky. Not Lime, it's Lamb, Kentucky. And somebody put KC Railroad there, Kentucky Central. And the shelter apparently set there. And it's the same shelter. I just tossed this in. We're going on down the track to Morning View, Kentucky. Uh, great postcard of Morning View. Wish it would have been a little brighter and a better printing. Uh, but this is Morning View. Not much was here, I will admit. It, there was a lot of dairy farms down through here. And I assume what we have is the morning train picking up the full cans taking them up to Tri-State in Cincinnati, and the evening train bringing the empties down. This, this is a train order board. It said the train needs to stop and get its orders, the telegraph orders to move on. This is it today, good people. Nothing left. You can see little remnants of the depot right there. Okay, we're moving on down to Alexander. Not to be confused with Alexandria. This is Alexander. And this is all there was there. You can't even get to the railroad tracks because it's all fenced off by a farmer. We're now down to Butler, the next little community. There, we're, there's a couple little towns we're going to hit, and they're located on the Licking River. The Licking River was semi navigable during the spring and fall when the river was up. And so you got a lot of little communities that grew on the river. And then the LNN, I'll call it the LNN for better terms, Kentucky Central, built down along the river and these little towns prosperous, prospered. And then US 25 was built three miles to the east. I-75 was built eight miles to the west. And you can guess it, they're dying. The Butler Depot, semi-colored postcard. I'm going to preach to the choir. There is no colored photography until the 1950s. All these postcards are an artist's vision of what they think the depot looks like. So if you're a rail fan, hey, by the way, us guys who play around with the trains, go out and look at the train, are rail fans. The stupid news people on TV who are extremely stupid, you know they're all stupid. When they call us train spotters, they're using an English term. They don't even know what we speak in the United States. NBC, CBS, uh, beside the point. 
I'll get off my little hobby horse. But anyway, this was the depot. Here's the view today of Butler, Kentucky. They actually have a uh, fertilizer plant back in here. So they do get grain cars, uh, covered hoppers in. A, another uh, postcard, a uh, real photograph of a work train at Butler. Uh, I assume somebody took it. A lot of the guys bought them, sent them home or whatever. And interestingly, it is a mixed queue crew. There is both white and colored working on the in the uh, work crew. You can always tell who's who by the hats they wear, who's the workers, who's the boss, and by their clothes and hat, and if they got a tie. Notice he's got a tie. He's a boss. Another view of Butler. I've asked a number of people about that monument, and I've gotten blank looks. What monument? I even showed them the postcard. What monument? I guess it's a Civil War monument, and it was moved somewhere. Strangely, they do not have a city cemetery anywhere around here. I've been unable to find out what happened to that monument. Uh, I assume you other postcard people have come across things and postcards. They're not there anymore, and you ask people about them, and you get this blank look of, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, we're go moving on down the track to, towards Falmouth. In 2001, the Licking River was up to here, good people. You could just barely see the top of this bridge sticking out of the water. The bridge still stands, used by CSX. A view into Falmouth. Children sitting on the track, we're social service. The water stand to fill the, uh, the, uh, the, the tender on the steam engine. About every 20 miles to 30 miles, particularly in this territory, they had to fill the, uh, ta the uh, tender with water because they're using a lot of steam working going through this area. This is another picture of the depot. It's all gone. Yeah, there it is. It's gone. No longer double track, single track. They do have a small yard back in here. Uh, they get ethanol tank cars in here. And I'm not sure what the guy does with them, but he gets tank cars in. This is US 25 Dixie Highway running south out of Falmouth. It runs from uh, Cincinnati, Covington on down to Lexington. All these little towns have a fairgrounds, a uh, postcard thereof, with a horse track. Uh, this is pre-television days, which I barely touch upon in my age. I was born in 1940. So I can remember going out the fairground, uh, the farmers and other people when they're racing their horses. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's before, Air conditioning and TV has driven everybody in their homes, and you've forgotten about how to go out and socialize. But the, all, all the counties in Kentucky, all of them still have fairgrounds, uh, but they're not like they used to be. They are growing, as you can see, hay and tobacco. Hay and tobacco is still grown. Uh, we should talk about a little tobacco a little bit later on and hay being harvested. Some more tobacco, uh, I'll pause here. It used to be 30 years ago, you grew your tobacco and you took it to the auction house and you sold it. And the federal government had set a price that if the companies didn't pay that, they would buy the tobacco from you for that price. But you were only able to grow so many acres of tobacco, later they changed it so many, pounds of tobacco. But what's funny was in 1900, you grew tobacco and you took it to the auction house and you were at the mercy of the big tobacco companies. Today, of course, there's no price support for tobacco, 
And if you see tobacco being grown in Kentucky, it's being grown as a share crop. A tobacco company has paid you to grow the tobacco and you've agreed on a price for which you're gonna sell it by the pound. A view of the Licking River at low water. Okay, we're now down to Morgan, Kentucky. The, this is the remains of the depot and that was the federal building in Morgan. And we called it the federal building because it was the US post office. Till caught on fire, you can see it burnt. They've now tore it down and they no longer have a post office here. May, may, actually, you're seeing about the whole town in this picture. There's a, pic, a diagram of the depot. Notice general waiting room, agent, baggage, Negro waiting room and freight depot over here on the side. We are a Jim Crow state, Kentucky, yes. The railroads fought it tooth and nails simply because of things like this, having to build an extra room, extra uh, uh, outhouses, ex run an extra car on the train, uh, and they lost throughout their battles in that. It's only sometime, I think it's 1960. It, the questions actually go to the US Supreme Court. I won't get all on this. It, it's a very disturbing thing. But in, I, in 1961, the Interstate Commerce Commission said, if it runs between two states, you, you can't have Jim Crow. Okay. This is another real postcard. Have no idea who these guys were. No names on the back. This is a work crew out. Somebody took the pictures, I assume sold it to them, and then they mailed them home or put them in the, uh, uh, up on the mantle at home. We're now down to Barry, another little town on the Licking River. Once again, the uh, main roads way off to the right. The depot in Barry, all gone. A diagram of it. Once again, Negro white waiting room. Agent, you notice he's got two windows to serve each one. The white waiting room enters out on the platform. The Negro waiting room has to go out around. And what it doesn't show here is the uh, four outhouses back here, colored man, colored female, uh, white man, uh, white female. And this is where the depot was. Post office over there. And a view of the, the town. We're now down at Robinson. Moving south, the depot. Uh, you, you go with what you get. Uh, not all postcards are great. Uh, it may have been a great postcard. It got exposed to the sun. It got wrinkled. It wasn't taken care of. It faded. Uh, so you try to sharpen them up with uh, your uh, computer. And this was the best I could do out of what it was. There is a diagram of the uh, depot. Once again, Negro General Freight agent's office platform out here. They have to walk all the way around to get to the front. Uh, we're moving on down the track to Cynthiana. Coming into Cynthiana, they had a very nice depot. It lasted up into the late 1970s when it got tore down, unfortunately. Louisville, Nashville train southbound. Another view of the depot. Freight yard over here. Uh, and our freight station here. Team tracks is what these were called because you had enough space so a horse and wagon, wagon pulled by horses, had room to turn and back the wagon up against the boxcar for offloading team track. Another view thereof. 
it's amazing with eBay, the postcards that you can find. A, a uh, diagram I've able to find, passenger depot, freight depot, tracks going through, the tracks serving the freight yard, and this was the team track back in here. Another view thereof. I know, like this one, they got a ladies' waiting room. Notice that it's a ladies' waiting room. It's not a female waiting room. It's a ladies' waiting room. Uh, well, what I find interesting here is here you got male and female. You got male off the general waiting room, and you got to come through the ladies. Have got to, quite often, though, they would not just leave any female back in the ladies' waiting room. It was a ladies' waiting room to be understood as that. So I am a little confused about this diagram because generally there would have been another female waiting room, uh, facility so that the unwashed females didn't mix with the ladies. Okay, you understand what I'm trying to say. A view of Falmouth. This is one of the other things that we have forgotten was up through World War II, 1940s, almost all the towns in the United States have local industries who supply goods in a 50 to 100 mile area. And it's only following World War II that we start getting these large factories that now serve the whole country. Here, industry is still local. There was actually movements in the 20s and 30s to limit factories from selling goods more than 50 or 100 miles from where they made them. Uh, that, of course, all died. This is warehousing for tobacco. Uh, we got grain silos here. We got some small industry here and small industry here, here. And this is smokestack industry. And that's because electrical companies did not want to sell to industry. Why? because industry was a strange user of power. They may have used all kind of power during the day and shut down at night. What's the utility company gonna do with all this ex excess power? And it's only following World War II that we get the huge power plants that we know today. And we get the large, well, they began to build them during World War II, the big factories that are now running 24 hour shifts, seven days a week. And there's enough demand for electricity that we can build the large power plants. We'll talk about the covered bridge in a minute. Another view, once again, this was a creamery, uh, grain silos, tobacco here. The covered bridge here, I, here's our railroad going through here. This was the scene in eight, June of 1864 of an attack by General John Hunt Morgan, Confederate Army, upon Cynthiana. He basically burned Cynthiana the ground. Every year in June, the good people of Cynthiana celebrate this battle. I don't know why they celebrate that the Confederates came in and burnt their town and kidnapped the black people, but that's the deal. Anyway, another view of the, another postcard view. And look at how this is colored. Same buildings, you know, as I keep telling people, this is artist renditions of this. This is some guy in Germany who's never seen this. He's got a photograph which the photographer may have made some notes on, or it's up to him to use his own uh, imagination of what the, the buildings look like. There's another view of the bridge. It is long gone. The uh, Kentucky Department of Transportation, of course, tore it down and put a concrete bridge in. Uh, we just unfortunately lost another one of our cover bridges. There is not a spot low enough in hell for those people who go out and set bridges on far. Uh, shame on them, double shame on them. Since there's ladies out there, I won't say what I really think of them. Oh, I need to mention in Cynthiana is Battle Grove Cemetery so called it because this is where John Hunt Morgan had his headquarters set up when he was defeated by the Union forces after he burnt the town. And what I like to show is 
you can't see it, but right back in here is a monument to the guys from uh, Harrison County, Cynthia is the county seat of Harrison, who served in the Mexican-American War. And there's names of 21 guys on it from Harrison County who died during the Mexican-American War. Four were killed in battle. The rest of died of disease. Tells you something. Coming down another fairgrounds, as I said, this was big business for the railroads. Notice once again, we got the uh, racetrack in the background. Uh, we still have racetracks, but if they're there, if they're for racing your, they didn't even race jalopies anymore. We didn't even have a demolition derby at our fair this year. I mean, what's going on? How can you have a fair without a demolition derby? Strange world we live in. The only reason I go to the fair to see a demolition derby. Okay. You know what a demolition derby is? That's when the, everybody gets their car in the arena and you crash into the other car and the last car to still be moving is the winner. Okay. Demolition derby. Uh, we're moving on down the track. Uh, we're moving down here to Licking. And there was the uh, poor folks home here. Poor folks farm. All the counties in Kentucky by state law were required to have a poor fork, poor folks farm to take care of the poor older people who couldn't take care of themselves. So this was there was, and there was a stop here. Once again, a typical wooden shelter. We've moved down, we're going across the bridge there. This was a steam outing run by the National Railroad Historical Society. Reading locomotive. Somebody made these postcards and occasionally it still pop on it on eBay. Uh, but this was a special excursion uh, put on by the National Railroad Historical Society. We're coming on down from Licking to Lair. Floor plan. I got no postcard of play of, of uh, Lair, Negro General Wedding Room. But this is where the depot was, right here. In October 1864, Montgomery Blair, U.S. Post General of the United States, is returning to Frankfurt to visit home. He's on a passenger train on the Kentucky Central coming down, which is stopped by guerrillas, I guess you want to call them here, who board the train and begin to rob everybody. They're dressed as Confederates, but they're robbing everybody on board the train. What I find simply amazing about this is nobody on the train told these, quote, Confederate soldiers that the Postmaster General of the United States, a member of US, uh, Abraham Lincoln's cabinet, is on board the train. Nobody spoke up and told him. The guy simply robbed the train and left. We're going on down to our next station along the way, Poindexter. The depot at Poindexter, long gone. There was somebody in the 40s and 50s who went around Kentucky taking real po uh, photo postcards of the depots and selling them. And if you go on eBay, and put in Kentucky depots or Kentucky stations, you're going to see a whole litany of this type of postcard. Uh, I've asked, nobody seems to know who the guy was that did this, but he fairly well covered most of the state. Uh, actually, we're a commonwealth, but we'll call ourselves a state, taking pictures of these depots shortly before they were abandoned and closed. My hat's off to him because, uh, and I'm assuming he's a he, for uh, preserving this history. Here's a picture, uh, I mean, a diagram of the depot. And this is where it sat right here. You used to be able to drive up here and a farmer has put a fence across here with a gate so you can't drive up here. This is CSX track looking towards Cincinnati this way. By the way, these few, few buildings here, that's the total town you're looking at there. We're now going down to Shawnee. That's how you pronounce it. 
Shawnan. We're at Shawnan. Uh, this is the station sign here. This is an LN track workers house, still preserved. CSX train southbound for Winchester. This is where the depot was. Go back. There's a road here and the depot was on the other side of the road. This is where the depot was. Kaiserton, our next stop along the way. And what I find amazing is this bridge still exists. The railroad was responsible for building bridges across its track if they didn't want people to cross on grade. And if you're driving around in Kentucky and you still come across one of these, you come across a rare, rare piece of history. These were built by the railroad, maintained by the railroad, and they are trying to unload them onto the state or the county. I'm not sure if the railroad still owns this one or if the county owns this one. But we have stepped up on the bridge. We're looking north, and the depot was right here. You can't see it, but if you go over here, hit it in the weeds and the trees, you can make out the roadway that swung down here to the depot area. We're now at Paris, Kentucky. Louisville and Nashville Railroad coming down like this. Uh, this is actually, if we're going to be correctly, the Covington and Lexington to here. This is the l and to uh, Lexington, which was the uh, Lexington and, I mean, correction, Maysville and Lexington Railroad later became l and This track was abandoned. This track here was the Kentucky Midland. Later, the Frankfurt and Cincinnati never got to Cincinnati, did start in Frankfurt. Uh, this was abandoned in the 1950s. This was abandoned in the 1980s. This was the uh, Maysville and Lexington on up to Maysville. Uh, it was sold by CSX to Trans Kentucky Transportation Incorporated, TTI. It was used to move coal up the Ohio River. Up outside of Maysville, they lost a quarter mile track to a landslide, never put it back in. And the track is basically abandoned. Uh, when I said they do some car storage here, but there's no online business and it's all growing up in weeds. This is the L and N coming down this way. This was the original track that Lexington abandoned. This is the track on down to Winchester. The bridge across Houston Creek or Houston Creek whatever you want to call it, at Paris. This is now gone. There is a separate highway bridge across, southbound train. Another view, northbound, Paris in the distance. This is a telltale. There is a low bridge up here. And brakemen used to ride on top of the car to set the handbrake in case the brakeman was facing the wrong way, which normally he did. So he didn't get the cinders in his eye. He would feel this hidden on the back and he would know to drop down flat on the roof of the car. Otherwise he was gonna lose his head as he went through a tunnel or underneath a uh, bridge. The depot in Paris, Kentucky. This is the Lexington section that's come in. It will be hooked on to the next train northbound to Cincinnati. The water tower is gone. This was the baggage depot recently gone. Uh, the passenger station is still there. And we'll be looking at it again. Once again, this is the Frankfurt and Cincinnati track coming in. Ends right there. Frankfurt and Cincinnati ran from Frankfurt to Georgetown to Paris where it ended. It was supposed to go on, on to Cincinnati and on on to uh, Eastern Kentucky, never got there. Louisville and Nashville track from Cincinnati to Winchester. Louisville and Nashville track to Maysville, later TTI track. This is a picture I took of the uh, 
Depot today. It's a restaurant. Uh, this is going to be their smokehouse. They are a bourbon drinking establishment and supposedly have 101 different bourbons. So they claim. This is the Duncan Tavern in Paris. It's a DAR library. I put it in because we at the Bluegrass Railroad Museum have the Louisville and Nashville former diner Duncan Tavern. And if any of you are secret billionaires getting ready to disown your kid, don't know what to do with money, give it to us and we'll restore the Duncan Tavern. All we need is a few million dollars. Uh, Paris to Lexington. Uh, this is the track down the Lexington. As I said, it's been, it was abandoned in 1951. This is the depot in Lexington that you would have wound up at, Union Depot. Served the LN, and the CNO in Lexington and Eastern. All gone. Nobody knows what happened to the stained glass window, one of the great mysteries. We assume a wrecking ball went through it. Uh, went up to Maysville. You would have wound up here at the depot in Maysville. Uh, we're all along the river. They have put in a flood wall to keep the, the river out of uh, Maysville. There is the depot, now a, uh, it's on the other side of the flood wall. It's now, and if we'd gone over to Paris via the Frankfurt and Cincinnati Railroad, there's the train we would have taken. Uh, the track between uh, Frankfurt and Paris was famous for being 40 miles long and having 40 trestles. And we are now in Frankfurt. The depot still stands, but the umbrella is gone and only one track has gone place. The tunnel's still there. We're going to have going on going down towards Winchester. Taking our train south towards Winchester. We're at Escondia. And this bridge apparently has been abandoned by the railroad because I used to drive up and over this, coming down this way or this way. And now there's a chain across here, which I assume the farmer over here put in. But you can still walk out on the bridge. This is where the depot was. Back up. Oh, you can't see it. The, there's still a little stub of the road that goes off this way, and you can see how it curved down to the track. We are now down at Winchester. We're basically, we're going to end our story. And when we do part two, we'll talk about it. But I'm giving you a quick little idea of what you can see if we do part two. Louisville, Nashville coming in, splitting at Patio Yard for Corbin, Kentucky and for Hazard. Chesapeake and Ohio coming in from Ashland across through Lexington and Lexington Eastern coming across from Lexington, swinging on up to Natural Bridge and on up to Beattyville. But that's the end of it. And I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, if we're going to do more about Winchester, we got to wait till the next time when we will do Winchester to Corbin. I hope you enjoyed this little rendition of a train trip from uh, Cincinnati to Winchester. And you want to allow the other people to butt in? Right. Very okay. good. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Charles. We appreciate that. Um, now, if um, folks would like to ask any questions, feel free to unmute yourself. Um, or you can put the questions in the chat and we'll pass those along to Charles, either way. Um, I'd like to ask, are there pass passenger trains in Kentucky now? Yes, there are. The uh, Cardinal runs Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Ash uh, it runs along the Kentucky River from Ashland to Cincinnati. And on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, it runs the other way along the river. It actually runs from Chicago to New York. That's the Cardinal. And the uh, city of New Orleans still exists. Runs from Chicago to New Orleans through Western Kentucky, 
Paducah to Fulton. Those are the only Amtrak passenger trains. Now, passenger trains. We operate a passenger train over at Bluegrass Railroad Museum. Stearns, Kentucky has a passenger train. New Hope, Kentucky Railroad Museum has a passenger train. And of course, my old Kentucky dinner train at Bardstown by R.J. Corman still operates. Uh, those are the only, I guess you want to call it tourist operation passenger trains in Kentucky. So we got two Amtrak trains through Kentucky and that. They are talking, I don't know, who knows President Biden's budget, so forth and so on, and all that sort of happy horse. But they were supposed to be putting back in the Kentucky Cardinal, and the Kentucky Cardinal ran from Indianapolis to Louisville. And then they were supposed to push it on to Nashville. If Congress ever passes that trillion dollar budget and they ever give $2 billion of it to Amtrak and Amtrak decides that Indiana and Kentucky and Tennessee will throw some money in. There's a lot of ifs in that whole story, right? Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. we want to throw in a whole lot up into New England first. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Fine. You can have it up in New England. Well, no, it's the busiest train tracks in the country. I mean, we, I, I, it, it, until COVID, yeah. I never ever consider driving to Philadelphia or for, you know, to Washington, D.C. I got on Amtrak um, and off I went, whether I went in Hartford, Kentucky or New Haven or whatever, but um, quite a bit different. But now the, the, um, the station in Owensboro became the newspaper office. Um, I haven't been back there for a few years, so I'm not sure if that's where they still are or not. But it was kept in good repair when I was growing up. And uh, as I said, it was the uh, Messenger and Inquirer office. You talking about Flemingsburg? Owensboro. Owensboro, okay. Owensboro, yeah, it's still a office building in Owensboro. Okay. The depot in Flemingsburg is used, was used by a newspaper they pulled out. The Henderson Depot, I understand, is collapsing or has been knocked down. The wall was bulging on them. Uh, but I don't know about the final thing. I keep oh, telling my wife we need to get out and start doing things again. Yeah, I, I mean, train travel. Um, well, I'd never been on a train till I came to New England. But uh, and now you go everywhere on it. Yeah, I actually took a train from Portland, Maine to Boston. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And um, well, well, there's people here. I mean, I've got friends that would go from um, New England to Chicago. Actually, one was afraid to fly, so he went all the way to California because he oh. didn't want to be on a plane. And then they took a trip up and down California, you know, the rails in California, yeah. and then came back by, you know train it was just uh, you know didn't want to fly so he had the time and went but um it is a nice way to travel yes it is i've done some western trips yeah. out to california and washington glacier park and, and uh grand canyon by train yeah there, there's a lot of the people that go south for the winter that will drive to Northern Virginia and put their car on the train and off they go to Florida. They have done that also. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Now, do you say that the uh, the one that goes to New Orleans, did that go through Paducah? No. It crosses at Cairo, Illinois, west of Paducah by about 40 miles, I'd say. Oh, okay. And it's right almost on the Mississippi River all the way down. Yeah. Because when I was at UK, everybody had to take buses if they were from Northern Ohio, you know, and that really was a long trip where trains would have been great. Yep. We lost it all. Yep. Did the other Gail want to say something? Well, the only trains I usually go on are uh, antique ones, 
Uh, we had a wonderful uh, day uh, uh, in Scranton, Pennsylvania. They used to have the um, trains up in New England, Steamtown, and they moved the whole operation to Scranton. And uh, we got on a train and we went to Strasburg. Cool. Uh, Toby Hanna. Toby Hanna. That yeah. was a, lo a quite a, a long ride, and they had stops along the way uh, with people dressed in the time of the old trains, and they would greet you and serenade you, which I'm quite sure they didn't do in those days, but it was a very nice ride. Yeah. <laughs> very nice. Yeah. And we, Charles, have a, we, we have a Gillette Castle in um, Connecticut that has a train. Um, Gillette was the the man that played Sherlock Holmes. Oh and, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. William and, Gillette. Yeah, and that train still goes around that huge park. It's on the Connecticut River, which is probably flooded right now. But <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, we've had so much rain up here. But um, that's a neat one, and we have quite a few of the older trains. Well, we actually have an, uh, another one that's a uh, hooks up with a, a river boat. Yeah, that's a tourist attraction, but in the in the fall we get a lot of uh, tourists and and train trips with uh, seeing the foliage up here. Yes. What was the name of the actor? Uh, William Gillette. William uh, Gillette. This yes. is for you, Diane. The original drawings of Sherlock Holmes shows him with a straight flight pipe. When Gillette went on the stage to do it, he used the straight pipe. He couldn't do it. So he developed the curved pipe so oh, that he oh. could stand there and talk with the pipe in his mouth. So that's <laughs> why all the new Sherlock Holmes has a curved pipe because of Gillette, because it, the uh, straight pipe didn't work on the stage. Yeah. <laughs> that, that is a too. very interesting nugget yeah. of information. Because yeah. I'll have to tell the next time I go to Gillette Castle, post pandemic, um, yeah. I'll see if they talk about that. And and you too, Gail, if you all go down there. Um, oh yeah, it's, a good piece it's, of trivia. It, it's a nice uh, summer, you know, stopping point in Connecticut. Beautiful, but uh, I'll have to see if they talk about that, and we'll know something they don't, right, Gail? I like that. And yeah. also, I learned one time going to Gillette's Castle that William Gillette had secret passages so he could spy on the guests and hear what they were talking about him. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Charles, uh, I have a question for you. Okay. So, um, how do you go about um, collecting these postcards? Like, how long have you been collecting? And do you are you always on the lookout for new additions to the, your collection? How, how does that work? Okay, here's the deal. I try on Friday evening after meals is go in on eBay and plug in my keywords and look for what pops up. And unfortunately, everything that pops up is something I already have. <laughs> uh, but every once in a while, something. But generally, when that pops up, the price goes way beyond my budget. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's I, I try to religiously on Friday night, because uh, I figure most people put a sub things up for seven days. OK, I may miss something along the way. That, that's, that's the way it goes. Uh, a lot of people put some people it up for you know four weeks, uh, mm -hmm. but, but generally it's seven days. So I just my Friday night thing is pull them up and uh, go through them and see what I see. And I have certain keywords I put in and see what pops up and uh, just just hope for the best. And when did you start collecting the postcards? I, I, okay, I've never seriously collected postcards. Sorry about that, people. I play <laughs> with 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 getting postcards. I I was collecting railroad postcards along the way, mm -hmm. and then along the way, as I began to do my these talks about railroads and everything, I I, I will tell you, a gentleman by the name of Earl Clark from the Cincinnati area 
and Bill Shapaka from the uh, Chicago area are the ones who showed me how to take postcards and turn them into a story. Postcards are more than just a picture. <laughs> postcards are more than just a postcard telling a story. A postcard can be put in an order to tell how an area has changed, to tell about a journey, to tell any sort of story you want your postcards to tell. And so I began to collect my postcards, basically of Kentucky, to tell a story of travel along a railroad track uh, or along an interurban. It's, uh, it, it's just a fun way to share this knowledge I picked up about history along the way. And as I commented earlier to Diane was, I've been told I'm gonna die tomorrow by my daughter and granddaughter and, my, and that I need to start getting rid of my stuff. And then other people are telling me, well, where's all this knowledge you have? And I keep saying it's up here. They keep saying, well, you need to put it down somewhere. So when yeah. you die tomorrow, you know, <laughs> somebody else can, can get hold of it. I, I don't know why I'm gonna die tomorrow, but that seems to be the, the, uh, yeah. the, the flavor lately, you know? We're, we're going to just bring a dumpster up back and park it out back and take all the <laughs> treasures and throw them in. Oh, I hope not. Yeah. You, I you hope see, not. And, and by the way, me, you know, that's just a small part of my railroad and military book collection. Hmm. Well, let us know when the funeral is because we want to <laughs> stop by. We want to go to your house <laughs> okay. while the funeral's going on so well, we can empty out of the postcard. <laughs> okay. 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 Thank you so much for another wonderful evening on the rails. Okay. We appreciate it. I, I, was, I just want to say one thing about the postcard. I have started to scan my postcards and deacquire the, my postcards. I've given almost all my railroad postcards to Chesapeake and Ohio Historical Society. Mm -hmm. And I've just kept a, the electronic copy, if you want to call it that, uh, because I am afraid, even though I keep explaining my daughter, granddaughter, and my wife about the value <laughs> of this, they just don't see it. It's just the Paper. dad's junk, granddad's junk, and my wife's mm -hmm. view it as my trash around the house. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, okay, <laughs> Diane, you can shut me up. Uh, you're you're just fine. Well, I truly appreciate you sharing your knowledge with us again tonight. It's always um, interesting. I always learn something new when, when I hear you talk about the railroad because you obviously have, not only do you have a lot of knowledge about it, but you have a lot of passion for it, and that yeah. makes all the difference. Okay. Um, we'll schedule the trip from Winchester on next month or so. We, we, will, we will see when we can uh, book that in, and we can pick up, pick up the journey from there. Um, but I thank everybody for joining us tonight, and I hope that um, we'll still be doing, um, we still will be doing virtual uh, for a little bit longer, not much longer, hopefully, um, but do, do keep an eye out um, on our uh, website, www.pspl.org, or the Paul Sawyer Public Library Facebook page um, for other program opportunities. Uh, we'd love to have you come back and join us, and we hope to see you again very soon. Thank you so much, Charles, and thank you to our audience tonight. You all have a wonderful evening. Thank you. You too. Thank you. Good night. Thank you.